on the 28th of October 1971, Black Arrow serial number R3 launched from the Woomera prohibited area in Australia on what should have been a groundbreaking flight but became historic because of, well, being the last. The Black Arrow had been developed by the UK to put small payloads into orbit. Most of the technology and systems used on Black Arrow had already been developed, or at least proven, in part through the Black Knight rocket program which had been used for re-entry profiling, or as the Blue Steel missile program. The Black Arrow was, as such, very much a reuse of technology in many, much, in many ways the same as the SLS today. Attitude control on the first two stages was carried out using thrust vectoring. In the first stage, the eight gamma engines were actually gimbal on a single axis. They were paired up to allow them to actually work perpendicular to each other and to provide axis on the roll, pitch and yaw axes. The unique nature of the craft, however, was not its lipstick look, but its fuel. It used high test peroxide and paraffin, or to put it simply as the newspapers would say, hair bleach and lamp oil. Unlike the Americans and the Soviets who had used liquid oxygen as their oxidizer, the British had seen a, well, an easier way to go, a cheaper way to go, and they had used HTP. It would provide the oxidizing power required to run the engines and also give the craft its unique shape and its unique uh, burn profile. You will see that it didn't really look as though it had a flame, it looked really clean in fact. The craft would climb up using its first stage for over two minutes, uh, slowly banking over. The Black Arrow had a unique arrangement of sizes. Its upper stage, second and uh, upper stage payloads were all measured in, in imperial units. However, its first stage was measured in meters, uh, in part because the British had identified the possibility of using the Black Arrow as a second stage on their Blue Streak rocket in place of the Coraline stage being developed by the French as part of the Euro Europa rocket program. At the end of its first stage, the craft coasted for seven or so seconds prior to detaching the first stage and after a short pause, Ullage motors fired and its second stage engines ignited. This was a pair of Gamma engines known as the Gamma 2, which had been optimized for vacuum flying and uh, provided a higher ISP. They were able to gimbal in two directions, which meant that the craft could roll, yaw, and pitch just like its first stage had. This stage would drive the craft up to an altitude of around about 500 kilometers or about 300 miles. The wonderful lipstick fairing would be released to unveil the satellite inside. The satellite, described by NASA as pumpkin in shape, was unique in its own way. Below it was the Waxwing solid rocket engine. This was going to provide its final push into orbit. Even prior to its launch, the Black Arrow had been cancelled. The Minister of State of Trade and Industry announced the cancellation of the Black Arrow project to the House of Commons on the 29th of July 1971, months before the project was planning to launch its first orbital rocket. However, the R3 rocket had already been shipped to site and the second stage had arrived three days prior to the announcement. As such, permission was given for it to launch. Money and the difficulties of post-war Britain had meant that the craft, although having great potential, wasn't seen as cost effective. The US had offered to launch British satellites using its scout rocket for a reduced cost and as such the government decided yeah we'll, we'll go with that, it's, it's cheap. In reality they were short-sighted. The upper stage would burn for 123 seconds meaning that after about 257 seconds into the flight the second stage would be out and all of the shall we say guided stages would have been used. On completion of its second stage burn after about 257 seconds, the rocket would pressurize its reaction control system. This would be used to maintain orientation above the planet as the craft waited to reach its apoapsis. At this point, the craft would coast until reaching that apoapsis. 
it would retain its position parallel to the surface of the Earth and prepare itself for releasing its payload. The Black Arrow's ascent profile meant that it took 710 seconds or 11.8 minutes from liftoff to spacecraft separation. As it reached its apoapsis, it would ensure it was positioned aligned parallel to the surface of the Earth and then it would fire a number of solid rocket motors to engage a spin. It would decouple its waxwing solid rocket booster from the second stage and then ignite, sending the craft forward. The satellite placed in orbit was to be named Prospero. It had originally been planned to call it Puck. However, on the cancellation of the program, it was decided to rename the craft after the character from the Tempest a sorcerer who had given up his magical powers. Following the burnout of the Waxwing upper stage, the payload was released and gas generators were used to push the spacecraft away from the spent upper stage. The delay between the burnout and separation was intended to reduce the risk of a reconnection between the payload and the Waxwing which was a solid rocket booster and as such could have residual thrust. Despite this, there was actually a collision, the waxwing being a little bit over, uh, over energetic, and this resulted in Prospero having a damaged antenna. However, the craft was still able to successfully complete its mission. To this day, one Black Arrow still exists, serial number R4, and while it didn't fly, it is preserved in the Science Museum in London, with its flight spares for the Prospero satellite. Prospero to this day still orbits the Earth, and um, it is not the only part of this program that's still relevant. The first stage booster was actually placed on display in Australia for a number of years before being returned to the UK where it is now I believe on display at Farnborough. And there are plans by Skylora to actually capture Prospero and hopefully return it to the planet. Two of the early launch sites proposed for Black Arrow at Oost and in Norfolk, whilst never used, have now been actually identified as future spaceports and are being you or will be used as such. So it's nice to think that a little of something lives on in the Black Arrow program. While Prospero may not have been the first British satellite, Aerial One took that title in the 60s, it was the first launched on a British craft and as such will always hold a special place in the heart. As of 2021, the United Kingdom is the only country to have successfully developed and then abandoned a satellite launch capability 